How many of you have already pitched in front of an audience before? Okay, great. Five of you, six of you. Great. That's a good start. But again, these principles can always be relearned. I practice them every time I have to pitch. So I think it's a good idea to kind of go through this again. <clears throat> I'm sure all of you got a copy of this, the pitch canvas. Very, very good, informative, talking about how to prioritize what you want to talk about, right? But I will go through some simple ways. So there are five rules. There are five rules of pitching. It's not about the presentation. It's not about your design. It's always about you. You standing on the stage is the presentation. Doesn't matter how pretty the slide looks. If you screw up, what comes out of your mouth? Doesn't matter what you have up there. So work on how to be in front of the audience. Rule number one, display confidence. Right? You might be working on solving the climate crisis. If you come out there and if you are not sure about what you're doing, nobody else is going to be sure about what you're doing. Right? You have to believe that you know how to do this, even if you don't. Right? That's rule number one of startups. If you don't believe, nobody else needs to believe. So you have to believe. When you believe, you display confidence. How do you display confidence? You stand strong, you speak strong, right? And you are convinced that you know how to fix this. If you don't display that, everybody will see it, right? So you gotta work on yourself. So how do you get confidence? Anyone? Practice, exactly. Practice with your team. You have time. Practice in front of a mirror, okay? Look at yourself, look at your expressions. How is your body language? Are you displaying confidence? Will you buy yourself? Because end of the day, that's what you're trying to do. Because you don't have any product yet, you don't have any customers yet, you got nothing. The only thing you got is yourself. You gotta make others buy you today. And you do that with confidence. You got to be confident. Okay? Rule number one, be confident. Rule number two, when you're on stage, no excuses. Nobody knows you screwed up. Okay? Nobody knows you screwed up. So don't make any excuses. Even if you screwed up, it's okay. Continue. Have rule number one, be confident even in your screw-ups. Confidently screw up, it's okay. Because nobody is judging you whether it's right or wrong. Obviously, the judge will challenge you, right? You don't have to be arrogant. You don't have to be a douchebag. But you can be confident about what you believe. And that you can show without being arrogant or being a douchebag, okay? No excuses, rule number two. Rule three, avoid superlatives. We are the first, we are the best, we are the only, I am the best, I am the only, no, you're not the only one. <laughs> Unfortunately, somebody else has already thought about whatever, whatever your bad idea is, it is, <laughs> okay? Bad ideas, people copy very quickly. Good ideas are rare, right? You need to believe that it's a good idea. So don't have any superlatives in your pitch. Even if it is revolutionary, even if it is the best, even if it is the fastest, you don't have to say that because you haven't seen everything else. So you don't know if it is right or wrong. You can still display confidence without using these superlative words, right? Use data. Use this time 
to gather data. What you are doing now is you have a hypothesis. You think what you believe to be true about this world, you need to validate with data. Do the research, find the data. All that information is available. You have time. Now, tonight you have another 12 hours and tomorrow you have another 8 hours. So you have 20 hours. More incredible things have been achieved in less than 20 hours. So you can find the data for your hypothesis. Frame your hypothesis, find the data, use the data in your pitch. As, as it says, it's a big market. Big is bad. Large market, that means you're ignorant. You have no idea what you're talking about. Seriously. Come up with a real number. Our market size is 70 million dog owners. Okay, great. How do I know it's 70 million? Verified by the Pet Association of the World. Okay, okay, fine. I won't challenge you there. But if you say, I have a large market, like, how large? 10 people, 100 people, 1,000 people? What are you talking about, right? Come with data, real data. And always end strong. What does it mean to end strong? Finish with an ask. Hey, I'm doing this, I need you to join me. Because guess what, we're gonna go and fix this problem. Inspire people. You have a chance to inspire somebody to act. That's the hardest thing anybody can do, right? Inspire them to act. Inspire them to want to help you, right? So you end strong by doing that. Five rules, right? What are they? First one. Be confident. Two. Superlative. Avoid superlatives. Three. Data, yes. Four. No excuses, yes. Five, and strong. Confident, no superlatives. That means fastest. We are the best. We are the fastest. We're super. We are Icelanders. Again, not a superlative, but almost. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Now we talk about pitch types. So tomorrow you are in a competition. There are 10 teams here. So you all get about seven minutes. I'm going to give you two minutes more than what is typically seen. It's usually three to five, so you all get seven minutes. Okay? Including questions or? No, no, not questions. Just seven minutes for you to pitch. And then we'll, we'll add questions and answers after that. So there are three types of pitches, elevator pitch, a competition, and a fundraiser, okay? When you're doing fundraising, usually it's about 20 to 30 minutes or longer. It's usually informal. You're meeting an investor in his office or her office, and you actually have to present a lot of data, right? You need to convince them that this actually makes sense. So we're not doing that, right? There's, there's, a, there's a whole weekend we can spend on how to do this, right? I teach a class on all that, but you don't, you, this, that's not for this now. <laughs> so let's not go there. So we are only here, but you can start here. Because this is how you get excitement. When you can clearly articulate your problem, clearly articulate what you are doing, you get me excited because I understand. When I understand, I'm engaged. If I'm engaged, I want you to win, right? The first rule of any pitch sales is to get the audience to agree with you, right? Make them start shaking their heads like this, right? How do we do that? Tell them something they already know. 
give them data to believe what you're doing. Okay? That excites them. That says, oh yeah, I want to solve this problem. This person seems to be on top of this. I want to see them win. Right? So that's what we're doing, competition. You want to get me excited and you want to have a clear structure. You have to walk me through a story. Within seven minutes, you should tell a compelling story. Why is Hollywood so successful? Why? They're great storytellers. They can communicate a climate crisis within two hours. <laughs> okay? Climate crisis is a big problem, but they do it in two hours. There is an introduction, there is a build-up, and there's a climax. We all walk away thinking, oh, God, we have solved this problem. Right? Hollywood is great. You see the trailer, it's 30 seconds, you want to go see the movie. Right? That's what I want you to think about. Your seven minutes is the trailer for your startup. And I'm sitting there judging you, and I'm like, dude, I want to go see this movie. I'm so excited. Seven minutes, I got it. Right? So, structure, storytelling, and excitement. Get them excited. So let's start with the elevator pitch because uh, I'm not going to go into the structure of it, but I'm just going to talk about elevator pitch because th this tells, this is the foundation for the structure. And you can build the structure using this, right? Use this to build the structure, to tell a story. What does a good story have? A beginning, a build up, and a climax, right? So think of your pitch that way. A beginning, a build up, pitch. Climax. Okay. So this is how a typical elevator pitch should be. My company, X, is developing a defined offering to help a targeted audience using blah with some secret sauce, something that you have figured out that nobody else has figured out. Okay, that's it. You can say this in less than 30 seconds, right? You can do this, that's why it's called an elevator pitch. You've been in an elevator, right? It takes about 30 seconds to go from top to bottom, bottom to top, depending on how building the building is, but relatively speaking, it's about 30 seconds. You should be able to say that you meet I don't know, Elon Musk in an elevator, and you need to pitch your startup. You can't do it. He's not going to give you seven minutes. You kind of locked him up for 30 seconds in the elevator. What are you going to do? You practice this, guess what? You can do it. You don't even have to think about it. You'll do it. Now that I've given you the structure, So who thinks this is easy to do? I hear pitches all day. I meet founders all day. And I can tell you, I wish if there's one thing that they would do better is this, right? Have clarity on what you're building. Communicate it clearly. If that's of interest, guess what? The investors want to talk to you. If you're not clear, if you're not clear about what you're building, it's very easy for them to say, I don't wanna, I don't wanna work with somebody who's not very clear about what they're building. Right? So it's it's hard. It's hard to do. So here's an example. My company Socialista is developing a social utility to help female consumers find deals online faster. Terrible pitch. Terrible. I don't have a clue what the hell is this about. What's a social utility? What? Does it turn on lights? A social utility is so 
abstract. I have no clue what you're trying to do, right? You have to be specific. An e-commerce site, okay, I get it. An e-commerce site, it's a marketplace to buy stuff, okay, it's easy. What the hell is the social utility? Nobody knows. I don't even think the founder knows. Avoid buzzwords. Mobile social CRM for SMBs in EMEA over HTTP, of course. Don't use buzzwords. Terrible. Terrible idea to use buzzwords. Simple, whatever it is, a mobile app, a mobile application, a web application, a desktop application. Simple. I'm building a mobile application to solve X. Okay, get it, okay. Everybody has a mobile phone, so we get it. Skip the objectives, like the superlatives that we talked about. A revolutionary service, yes, fight the power. Everybody wants to fight the power. You don't have to have it in your pitch deck, right? You'll fight the power by winning in the marketplace. Win your customers, then you will fight the power, okay? It's just a back-end software. Nothing revolutionary about a back-end software. Everyone has one, okay? Everybody has a database, so don't, don't even try. Nothing, nothing revolutionary about a back-end database. This we talked about. Who is your customer? Specific audience. Identify, identify demographics. Female consumers. Again, female consumers are everywhere. <laughs> Who are they? Be more specific. Mothers aged 24 to 36, pet owners aged blah, blah, blah. Professional renters aged blah, blah, blah. Employees having a union service, right? Be specific about your audience. That also tells me a little bit more that you've actually given it thought. You've thought about your customer, you've thought about their problem, and specify your market. That's funny, actually. Artists and musicians, jugglers, piano players, and trained monkeys unite. <laughs> no, just unsigned electric bands, right? Simple. To the point, to your audience, right? Simple, keep it specific. Clarify the buyer, right? Who is your buyer? Who actually buys the product? Who needs to download this app? Who needs to make that decision to buy something? You know, it's important. If you don't know who the buyer is, then nobody's buying. If nobody's buying, you're dead on arrival. You don't have a startup. You have a good hobby. So we have kind of fitted some of those things. My company, Social, is developing an e-commerce site to help mothers aged 24 to 36 find deals online faster. Okay, better. I get it. There are so many people who have a solution and they're trying to find a problem. They built this platform and they want it to fit into some problem. And like, anybody, take it. Somebody use this platform. <laughs> Terrible way to build a startup, right? Identify a problem. Remember yesterday we talked about, think about five things that's broken, right? Why, why are we talking about broken things, right? If it's painful, Think about painkillers versus vitamins, right? If you have a throbbing headache, guess what? If I come to you and say, here's Ibuprofen, and your pain is going to go away, you're going to take it nine times out of ten. But if I come and tell you, I'm going to give you this vitamin, you take it for five years, and the fifth year, you will never have headache, you'll be like, don't you see I'm dying now? You're telling me that I want to do this for five years and then this will go away? I don't care, right? So painkillers are a great way to hook the audience. So that's why I identify a problem that everybody can relate to, right? In some cases, 
you might have a unique understanding to a problem that I don't know. That's where you need to be specific. You need to be able to clearly articulate the problem and say, this is the problem, these are the groups of people who have this problem. Use data, then you can convince me. More specific, my company Socialista is developing an e-commerce site to help young mothers shop for hip baby products at wholesale prices. Specific, okay, I get it, all right. You're clear about what you're doing, great. I'm confident that you can execute this. Again, you know, you are building a startup, so there may be some secret to what you're doing. I mean, today, the secret sauce is AI, <laughs> right? Everybody is an AI company. You're not, <laughs> let's me be honest. You're not an AI company. If you think you're an AI company, you're not. Google is an AI company. Facebook is an, or Meta is an AI company. DeepMind is an AI company. You're not. You want to build an AI company, but in order to build an AI company, you need a lot of other things. You need data, you need expertise, talent, all that stuff. So it'll all come, but you need to first sell somebody on that idea that you have a problem that AI can solve. So more clear pitch, elevator pitch. My company Socialista is developing an e-commerce site to help young mothers shop for hip baby products at wholesale prices with automated ordering for diapers, wipes, and other staples. Okay, I think it's doable, sounds reasonable. Okay, great. I believe you. So I did one example to a startup that we have invested in. Do I need to explain what retina risk does? No, you get it, 30 seconds, you get it. Build the structure of your presentation, the deck. Build the story. There might be gaps, fill the gaps, right? Don't waste a lot of time debating about names or ideas, all that. Not that it should, it's bad, you can do that, but have the structure in place and debate about the gaps, right? What's the best way to fill the gap? Start building your pitch. Start practicing your pitch, right? Because you got 27 hours, give or take and you need to sleep, or maybe not, it's up to you. If you structure yourself well, and if you organize yourself well, you can actually have a good night's sleep, and you can pitch. Luckily, this is not a coding hackathon. If you build a code, that's fine, that's great. I'm not gonna stop you, <laughs> right? But what matters is your pitch, right? Because nobody's gonna test your code, because we don't have any coding you know, requirements. But if you build prototypes, if you show how this application is gonna work, all that is in benefit, okay? Doesn't have to be feature rich, but it just needs to communicate. Be clear about the problem. What are we doing? Why are we doing this? Why do we care? Why you? Okay? All right, questions? I have a question. So, how should we go into these for right so the question is how deeply should any of you go into customer traction business model investments or team again you have seven minutes so you can't really go into any detail there but you obviously team i would you know, in the slide, I would put more details about the team because the question is why you? Why should you be the right person to solve this problem? So give some context. Uh, investments, not needed because you're not expected to. Business model, yes, you can define how you're going to charge for your service, right? You're creating value for a group of people. How are you gonna get compensated? You can talk about that. It could be software as a service, could be commission, 
It could be licensing, right? Could be one of those business models. Customer traction, by the way, if you've already talked to a bunch of customers and you already have created a group of people, talk about that. Say, that shows that you've done your research, right? Because that'll help your case, saying that, yep, I've talked to 500 customers on Facebook and they all think that this is real and relevant. And by the way, we've collected 50 email addresses who want to be kept informed about the development of this project, okay? That's traction. By the way, if you get email addresses, you're gangbusters, right? So even if you just create a landing page, describe your problem and have a simple form where give us your email, we keep you informed. And if somebody gives you the email address, you have won. <laughs> Exactly, yeah, it is a validation. So that is one way to see if you have a problem or not. If people care about what you're doing or not. I mean, true story, when I first started Startup Iceland, I have never hosted an event before, never sold tickets, never raised sponsorship money, never been in any organizing thing. But I did create a landing page and I collected 500 email addresses in one week. 500 email addresses. People who signed up and said, yes, we want to participate in this event to learn about the startup thing that you're talking about. That was validation for me. I was like, oh, okay. I took that 500 email addresses and I went to some of the companies and I said, I have 500 people who are willing to show up. Do you want to be there? And all of them are like, yeah, sure, why not? I know people who have built multi-million dollar businesses on just email lists. Just email lists, right? Because end of the day, all what you're trying to do is to build a business, right? End of the day, you want to build a business. That's why you're here. And business need customers, paying customers. All right? Okay, so I've answered the question. Anybody, anyone, anything more? You recommend just one person doing the pitch or? It's up to you. It's up to your team, how best you want to do it. I mean, if you practice and if there is a smooth transition between your team members, then I would say go for it. But if too many people are pitching, it could also be distracting, right? So decide how you want to do it. Whatever path you pick, make sure you practice. If two people are gonna pitch, practice. What is the cue? When does the other person come in? How smoothly the transition should be, right? The, the smoother your pitch, the better you can get across the idea and make sure if you have presentation and stuff like that, give at least an hour before the pitch because we start at four. So by three, make sure you have you know, the technology things all sorted. Don't wait till the last minute to build your pitch deck, right? That's why I'm saying build the structure now. Start preparing to fill the holes. So by three, you're ready. You get the presentation to Stefan, make sure he loads it up in the computer that's gonna be used, and then we go through the cycle. And we'll pick the numbers and you can, you can if you're ready first, you get to go first, right? So if nobody picks, then we will pick the number. So then you are, you are at our mercy, right? So you pick, you decide, but make sure you practice. That's all I would say. And by the way, both me, Stefan, Ole will be here and the, and the mentors, more of them will be coming later today to um, you know, practice. If you wanna practice your pitch, you can practice the pitch with them or you can practice the pitch with me. Right? All right? Okay, good luck. Keep, keep building.